The movie begins under the moonlight. Three lifeless bodies emerge and float to the surface of the Connecticut River in western Massachusetts. It is not revealed who these people are. Next, we see homicide detective Thomas, waiting at the South Station, Boston Airport, to pick up his daughter, Emma Craven, who is coming home to visit him. It is revealed that he is a single father and has been a Boston homicide detective for many years. Emma is 24 years old and his only child. He buys some food from a shop and returns to find Emma waiting for him. Suddenly, Emma vomits while getting into the car. Concerned, he asks if she is okay. Emma assures him that she is fine and they head home. Despite his happiness to meet his daughter, Emma's health takes a sudden turn for the worse. Back at home, Thomas and Emma decide to have a nice dinner. Thomas prepares dinner, while Emma is sitting at the dining table waiting for him. Once again, she experiences a nosebleed and begins vomiting. Emma gets worried and cries out loud. Thomas tries to comfort him and Emma urgently requests to go to the doctor. It is revealed that she may have ingested poison and insists on reaching the hospital as soon as possible. She tells Thomas that she has to tell him something. As they step outside the house to go to a hospital, a masked gunman arrives there and yells Craven. When they turn to look back he fatally wounds Emma with a shotgun blast and escapes as Thomas attends to his daughter, who dies in his arms. Thomas's world crumbles as Emma Craven succumbs to death. It is not revealed if the masked man came to kill Thomas or Emma. As a single father with no one left, Thomas is now completely alone. Holding his daughter's lifeless body close, he breaks down in tears. The following day, the police visit Thomas's home. They suspect that someone harboring ill intentions toward Thomas came for his life but mistakenly shot his daughter. During the night, as he wipes his face with a towel, he notices stains of his daughter's blood on it. Touched by grief, Thomas preserves the towel as a poignant memento of his beloved daughter. Overwhelmed by the void left by Emma Craven's absence, he ventures into her room, searching through her belongings while yearning for her presence. During this, Thomas finds Emma's phone. Suddenly, it begins ringing and he answers the call, only to be met with silence on the other end. He finds it quite weird but does not call back. Consumed by the shock and grief of his daughter's death, Thomas remains haunted by the thoughts of his daughter. The following morning, he heads to the police headquarters, returning to duty to help find out who wanted to kill him. He asks the forensic team to extract contact numbers from Emma's phone. Despite his senior officer suggesting he take leave, Thomason insists on conducting the investigation personally. Determined to seek answers, he visits the doctor who performed Emma's post-mortem. When he asks the doctor about it, the doctor tells him that the cause of the death is a bullet wound. At the medical examiner's office, Thomas asks for a pair of scissors and then he takes a lock of Emma's hair as a memento. After this, Thomas goes to a beach and proceeds to scatter Emma's ashes on the beach. Upon his return, he searches Emma's bag and discovers her company ID card, revealing her employment at the Northmore Company. In her room, he discovers that Emma has a .45 pistol that he uncovers in a drawer on her nightstand. The discovery of the gun leads him to suspect that someone may have been pursuing his daughter and that Emma was the target all along. After tracing the gun's serial number, he identifies it as registered to an individual named David Burnham. Thomas decides to visit David Burnham as he believes that he is the one who called Emma last night. Thomas arrives at David's house and knocks at the door. Meanwhile, we see David who gets alert and holds a knife. Thomas slowly opens the door and he moves to get inside. Suddenly, David slams the door on his hand leading to the gun falling out from Thomas. They two struggle for a bit but Thomas eventually manages to subdue David. He questions David only to learn that David is Emma's boyfriend. Then. He asks David why he gave the gun to his daughter. Was someone behind her and was she in some danger? However, David refuses to tell him anything because someone is keeping an eye on him too. Then, he finds some of Emma's belongings and gives them to Thomas along with her house keys and tells him to leave. It is revealed that David and Emma used to work for the same company. David is living in fear of Northmore and before leaving, Thomas gives his card to David so that he can call him if he ever needs help. Now, Thomas realizes that David will not say anything more so Thomas decides to go to Emma's house. He wonders what could have happened for Emma to keep a gun with her. Inside Emma's house, 
Thomas stumbles upon a Geiger counter, a device used to detect radiation. Upon investigation, Thomas discovers that the lock of Emma Craven's hair is radioactive. Meanwhile, a man named Darius Jedberg receives information from his informant about Northmore being involved in the illegal production of nuclear weapons, led by Jack. It appears that Emma might have uncovered this information and was going to expose him. Contrary to the police's belief that Emma was killed by an enemy of her father, the reality seems more complex. Now, it is confirmed that Emma Craven discovered that Northmore, a research and development facility under contract to the U.S. government and headed by Jack, was secretly manufacturing nuclear weapons using foreign material. The weapons were intended to be linked with foreign nations if they were used by the U.S. as dirty bombs. And maybe Northmore had got her killed and made it seem like the killer was after Thomason. After finding out about this, Thomas decides to dial the numbers found in Emma's phone, possibly seeking further clues. He finds Melissa Conway's phone number there and calls her. Then, he asks her to meet him as she is a friend and co-worker of Emma. At first, she is not willing to meet Thomas but then when she hears about the tragic news of her friend's death, she agrees. She tells him that she will call him and inform him when she wants to meet him. The next day, Thomas goes to meet Jack, and when Thomas confronts him, he tells Thomas that Northmore is not doing anything illegal. They only used to research those matters which got permission from the government. The scene shifts and Thomason is seen burning Emma Craven's clothes in the backyard of his house when he senses someone behind him. Thomas quickly draws his weapon and turns to find Darius Jedberg, a British consultant, casually sitting in his backyard. It is revealed that Darius is tasked with preventing the disclosure of the information Emma Craven had in tying up any loose ends, including her father. Darius reveals to Thomason that his daughter was a terrorist, leaving Thomas in shock. After this, Darius shows Thomas some photos of three deceased individuals, whose bodies we saw at the start of the movie. Darius claims that all of them tried to infiltrate Northmore to gather information about their illicit activities. According to Darius, they died while attempting to escape, implying that something is awry within Northmore. Jedberg further tells Thomas that Emma's computer was missing from her house. However, Thomas says that he cannot believe that his daughter was involved in illicit activities with the Northmore. After this, Darius reveals that Emma also went with these three people to steal information about Northmore but she somehow escaped before they could get her. Now, Thomas understands what Emma wanted to tell him but before she could say anything she was murdered. Darius takes a liking to Thomas, leaving him to investigate. Meanwhile, Thomas repeatedly has visions of Emma's past, including short conversations, typically as a happy young child he remembers and loves. The next day, Thomas visits Emma's boyfriend David again and asks him if Emma was involved with those people. David discloses to Thomason that Emma was an activist who had reported the illegal activities at Northmore to the government and had written a letter to Senator Jim Pine. He explains that Emma intended to expose the wrongdoing at Northmore. In addition, David also clarifies that Emma Craven was not exposed to radiation during her research. After this, Thomason returns the gun to David. The following day, David is found dead, shot in the head. Meanwhile, a strong friendship develops between Thomas and Darius. Darius tells Thomas that Emma's friends must have done something that exposed them and her to radiation and he is determined to reveal the truth behind it. After this Thomas goes to meet Mr. Sanderman, he is a lawyer and Emma Craven told him about Northmore before dying. However, as he is Northmore's company lawyer, he folds his knot and does not allow the truth to come out. So, when Thomas asks him about it, he flatly denies it. After getting no leads from Sanderman Thomas goes to meet Melissa, one of Emma's activist friends, and she tells him that Jack, the owner of Northmore became suspicious of Emma. Emma had informed Melissa that she suspected she was being poisoned by Jack. After this, Melissa reveals that she has a 13-year-old child, and sharing more information could jeopardize her life. As she starts to leave, Melissa hands an envelope to Thomas. Unfortunately, a car collides with Melissa in what appears to be a deliberate accident orchestrated by Jack. Thomas recognizes the car from its presence near Northmore, indicating that it was part of Jack's scheme. The car makes a turn and is about to run over Thomas as well but he shoots the driver with his gun and this causes the car to crash and fall into a river. After this, Thomas and Melissa to the hospital but due to this accident, she lost one of her legs. Back in his car, 
he opens the envelope that Melissa had given him. Inside the envelope, he finds a CD, and after playing the CD he finds a video of his daughter, in that video note Emma has talked about nuclear weapons being made illegally. Now Thomas comes to know why his daughter was murdered. After a number of leads and days of investigation, Thomas eventually discovers through Melissa, who was nearly killed by a Northmore agent, that Jack ordered Emma Craven's murder, as well as those of the other activists Emma was working with to expose Northmore. After examining Emma's fridge with a Geiger counter, Thomas discovers that her milk is radioactive, meaning she was poisoned using this milk. After this, Thomas confronts U.S. Senator Jim Pine who was contacted earlier by Emma, revealing that Thomas knows almost everything that happened. He tells him to investigate this case properly and leaves. Later Thomas is at home when his fellow detective and friend, Bill, comes to his home. During this, Northmore agents break into the house. The agents render Bill unconscious with a taser and kidnap Thomas. Now, Thomas realizes that Bill set him up before the agents. They put a passed out Thomas in an ambulance and take him away to Northmore. He wakes up handcuffed to a gurney in the Northmore facility. It seems like they have imprisoned him in a room, but he manages to escape. He arrives back at his home but his health starts deteriorating rapidly and he keeps vomiting again and again. He realizes that these are the symptoms of a sickness caused by radiation poisoning. He was possibly poisoned by the Northmore agents before he was kidnapped. He realizes that he has very little time so he takes his gun and sets out to kill Jack Benny. Thomas proceeds to Jack's house and, at gunpoint, compels one of the Northmore agents to shout Thomason, ultimately revealing the actual killer of his daughter Emma. He shoots him, and then Jack and Thomas both start shooting at each other. Jack shoots and injures Thomas, but Thomas also manages to wound Jack. After this, Thomas forces some of the radioactive milk down Jack's throat, knowing that he, too, will die within some time. After this, Jack runs away to his room and finds the medicine, which happens to be the antidote to the poison and attempts to take some pills to counteract the radioactivity. Thomas, however, tells Jack that he deserves what's coming to him and proceeds to shoot Jack dead. The scene shifts and we see Thomas who is hospitalized for gunshot wounds and radioactive poisoning. Meanwhile, Darius, afflicted by an unrelated terminal illness, convenes with the senator and two political advisors who had enlisted him to manage Thomas. Their objective is to present the Northmore incident in a favorable manner. The senator emphasizes the need to portray the narrative to the public in a manner that casts Emma as a terrorist who poisoned her own father. Darius proposes that orchestrating an assassination attempt on the senator could serve as a strategy to divert attention away from Jack's death in the media. The group finds this suggestion appealing and they willingly support the narrative but their satisfaction is short-lived as Darius informs the senator that he is aligned with the wrong side of the equation. In an unexpected turn of events, Darius eliminates both advisors and the senator. During this, as a young and apprehensive police officer enters the senator's room, Darius, holding him at gunpoint, inquires whether the officer has children. Upon receiving an affirmative response, Darius lowers his gun, enabling the officer to fatally shoot him. Darius Jedbug had no children. It is revealed that he didn't want to take a father away from his children so he let him shoot himself. As Thomas lies in his final moments in the hospital, Emma enters his room, leans down beside his bedside, and softly whispers into his ear. Meanwhile, Thomas's life ebbs away in the hospital from his injuries and radiation exposure. Then, we see a young reporter from the local TV station WFXT, who had recently interviewed Thomas, open a letter from him. Inside, she discovers DVDs recorded by Emma Craven exposing the conspiracy, sealing Northmore's downfall. As Thomas breathes his last, the spirit of Emma consoles him. In a poignant scene, Thomas and Emma are depicted departing the hospital hand in hand, strolling down the corridor and moving toward a radiant, white light together. And the movie ends here. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications, so you can watch more movies like this. Thanks for watching.